My son-in-law came into my room while I was sleeping. She was in that sweet middle ground, between being completely asleep and half awake, and I let out a contented sigh. I don't know what he had caused me to do, but he wanted me to continue. Then, just as he was settling me down to sleep, something strange happened. I felt like soft hands began to massage my ears. Yes, my ears. What the hell? At first I thought it was part of a dream, a kind of pleasant dream, caused by my comfortable position. But, as the caressing continued, I realized that this was too real to be a dream. I'm not going to lie, it was quite enjoyable. As if I were receiving a nice massage. Then, that feeling of pleasure turned into a sound of satisfaction. Who was in my room? And why did it feel so good? At that moment, I was in a kind of transition between reality and dream. I wasn't entirely sure if what I was experiencing was real, or just a product of my playful mind, while I rested peacefully. But honestly, I didn't care at all about that. All he wanted was for that incredibly pleasurable feeling to continue, no matter where it came from, or what its purpose was. Who cares when you are having such a pleasant dream? There was no room for thoughts or fear at that moment. There was only one thing, the ecstasy of those soft caresses on my ears. He could have asked me a thousand things in that moment. Who was the person behind these caresses? Why was he in my room? What did he want from me? But there was no room for those questions in my mind. I immersed myself deeper in the sensation, letting myself be completely carried away by the wave of pleasure that enveloped me. I had never experienced anything like this before. I have never felt such a deep sensation with something as simple as an ear massage. But there I was, completely surrendered to the experience, wanting nothing more than the continuation of that wonderful moment. I lost myself in that state of ecstasy, letting the sensation completely envelop me, without worrying about anything. Because, at that moment, all he wanted was to enjoy the happiness he was experiencing, regardless of whether it was real or just a dream. Little by little, that wonderful feeling I was having began to wake me up from the dream I was in. Then, with a sigh, I opened my eyes. I blinked several times, trying to focus my vision, as I tried to understand what I had just experienced. And that's when I realized I wasn't alone. Hello? I said, my voice sounding strange and a little hoarse after being silent for so long. There was no response immediately. But after a few seconds, a familiar voice rang in my room. Hello, mother-in-law. My head swam as my brain tried to process what I had just heard. My son-in-law? What the hell was he doing in my room? And, more importantly, why was he stroking my ears while I was sleeping? What are you doing here? I asked trying to stay calm. There was a pause before my son-in-law responded, and when he did, his tone was a little mischievous. Well, I thought it would be fun to scare you a little. But I didn't expect you to like ear massage so much. I looked at him, unable to decide if I wanted to slap him or play along. How could I have been so confused? But then, a smile escaped my lips, before I could stop it. You're an idiot. I said, but my tone was playful instead of angry. My son-in-law smiled, as if he was delighted to have massaged me. I know. But let's admit it, it was enjoyable. 
pleasant is not enough. It was incredible. I responded, letting out a playful look. My son-in-law raised an eyebrow with a mischievous expression on his face. So I should put it on my list of awakening techniques. He asked, with a playful grin. I bit my lips, playing with him. I will consider it. But don't get your hopes up too high. It's not every day I meet an ear masseuse as talented as you. He smiled, understanding the joke as much as I did. Well, if you ever need another massage session, just let me know. I will be happy to do it. I'll keep that in mind, I said with a smile, although inside I was surprised at how comfortable I felt talking to him about something so intimate. After all, it's not like we're having a normal conversation. But somehow, that strange moment seemed to have created tension between us. We were silent for a moment. But instead of feeling uncomfortable, I felt strangely calm. Well, I think he should go, my son-in-law said, breaking the silence. I don't want you to think I'm planning more mischief while you sleep. Are you sure not? I asked with a mischievous smile, only to see the wicked look on his face. After my son-in-law left my room, I found myself alone, but thinking. His playful words, his mischievous look, everything seemed to keep fluttering in my head. I sat on the edge of the bed, trying to focus on anything but him. But how could I have those kinds of thoughts with my own son-in-law? I remembered his soft hands, the massages that had made me shiver with pleasure, and I found myself smiling foolishly at it. He was my son-in-law, for God's sake. But for some reason, that only seemed to make it more exciting, more tempting. I found myself torn between logic and desire, between what I knew was right, and what I longed to do. And as I debated with myself, one thing became clear, this was not going to stop there. That flame between us had been lit, and now, it was only a matter of time before I had an affair with him. I know he is my son-in-law, my daughter's boyfriend. And that should be the end of the matter, a forbidden relationship. But here I am, lusting after him, tempted by the idea of what might happen if I went with the flow. The truth is that he was the one who started this game, who lit the flame that is now turning into an uncontrolled fire. And while part of me knows this is wrong, another part of me is willing to move on, to embrace the temptation and see where it takes us. The idea of being with my son-in-law has settled in my head, and no matter how much I try to ignore it, I can't get it out of my thoughts. I know it would just be an adventure, nothing more. I don't want to get my daughter's boyfriend, I don't want to jeopardize their relationship. Is it wrong to want that? If I'm going to go forward with this, I'm going to have to do it with my eyes wide open, aware of the consequences and ready to face them. Because although I may burn with desire to be with him, I know that I will also have to be careful that no one finds out. Who hasn't had an adventure at some point in their life? That's the question I ask myself, as I think about this. Is it so unusual to feel this kind of desire? I repeat these words to myself in an attempt to justify my own desires. I haven't been with a man in so long, I've almost forgotten how he feels. The excitement, the passion, the lust, it's all fluttering around in my mind, clouding my judgment and increasing the need as a woman inside me. Would you be with your son-in-law or his daughter-in-law? The idea seems absurd, even scandalous, but here I am, considering it as if it were a possible option. That's wrong? 
Every time my son-in-law comes home to visit my daughter, I feel like her eyes are following me. It's like he's sending out signs, little flashes of barely concealed desire. Or maybe I'm just imagining things. But I can't help but notice the way her glances last a little longer than necessary, or how her smiles seem to have a double meaning. It's like he's flirting with me, testing the limits of our father-in-law relationship, in a way that makes me feel uncomfortable and turned on at the same time. And I know I shouldn't, I should put those thoughts out of my mind and remember my place as a mother. But the truth is that I am human, and the flesh is weak. If he looks for me, he will find me. I want to grab my son-in-law when he is alone. It's what I plan to do, and the desire I have. But until now, I haven't had the opportunity to do so. My daughter is always there, acting as a protective shield between us, preventing me from acting and following my womanly impulses. It's frustrating, somehow, like fate is mocking me, keeping my son-in-law out of my reach, just when I want him most. But I know it's only a matter of time before the perfect opportunity arises, before everything aligns and I can experience that moment of passion. I am waiting patiently, observing every movement, every gesture, looking for that moment when we are alone, and I can make my fantasies come true. Because I know that when that time comes, there will be no turning back. I'm ready to throw myself headlong into it, regardless of the consequences. When I get intimate with him, when I cross that line that I'm longing for, I promise you that I will come here and tell you everything. I will give you all the details, without censorship or filters.